Hi, I'm Sat from Apps for Good. Welcome to an, a, a second tutorial on using PhoneGap. So this is going to be quite a short one. This is actually just um, uh, talking a little bit more about that template folder. Um, so I created a template folder in the last tutorial and links are that below. Um, and there's also a link to the template folder on our website. So you can download that template folder and import that folder into your Eclipse uh, project. So you don't have to go through all those steps. I still recommend that you do go through those steps because a newer version of Cordova could have come out and then you want to be as up to date as possible. But if you just want to jump straight into development, um, I understand that and I'll talk you through how you can do that. So you want to go file and you want to go and import and you want to click on Android, existing Android code into workspace, click browse and then locate where you saved that file. Um, so that file obviously is already on my computer since I just built, I just wrote it. Uh, but if I go to it, it's there, and I click OK. You'll notice a little tick box comes, but tick box comes up, and it has the name of the um, you know, the package name that I gave it from before. Um, so I can click Finish, and it will copy the. Uh, project into um, Eclipse. I'm not going to do that because I've already got it there. Um, so I'm going to cancel that. But if you were to do that, it would appear here, and it might appear a little bit more like this. We'll have like a little URL more um, like that. Uh, don't worry, you can just rename it and and go from there. So if I wanted to create a new project, I could just copy it, can right click this, copy and paste it again here and then rename it and work off of that and that way I've always got a new um, I've always got a template folder that I can work off of um, and I don't have to um, keep taking making those steps um, so if I go to uh, this new folder that I've just made base of the template one I just copied and pasted it and I go inside of assets you'll notice it's slightly different to the one that I showed you before um, the index folder, well actually the WW folder has the CSS fo a folder in it which has one file, a JavaScript file folder which has one file, um, uh, index.html and about.html. Um, so hopefully this makes sense to you since you may have, you've probably gone through a few of those tutorials um, um, and some, through some of the PowerPoints um, that are also um, on our website so the links again will be in the description um, if you have done that then this will look quite familiar um, basically I've just got a simple index page here with a, a button on it um, and a paragraph with some text on it um, and that links and also a href which links to an about page which is this page here and both of those the index page and the HTML page and the about page both have links to a CSS style sheet which is in the folder CSS and is indexed for CSS. So I could check this by doing right click um, run as and then doing the Android application which is what we did before uh, but I'm going to show you another way to check this and that is just by going right clicking on the um, the file that we want to open up first so index.html is always the one that we should go for first and I'm going to click on open with and this time I'm going to click on web browser and then when I click this you'll notice it actually has opened up a web browser for me over here so although I recommend that you always test your apps using a phone some sometimes you're just doing some HTML CSS and JavaScript and you just want to test it quickly and you can do it locally using your browser there's nothing wrong with that and in fact this works perfectly fine I can click on here and it takes me to the about page I click back and it sends me back uh, you will notice this paragraph is red and that's because of the CSS and there's a small uh, JavaScript um, some f a function in here so if I type something in here uh, tip my tab my name and uh, click change text it will add my name to this text well actually it changes this entire text and adds it onto there um, and I can show you that in the JS file here. So in the index.html um, folder and file, so I, what it has is a the little button, and that button has an on-click 
call and that calls a function called change text which is inside the JavaScript function which all got pulled in here so I've kept all my JavaScript uh, functions separate in a separate folder in a separate file um, so it's easier to find so if this is a JavaScript call uh, it's calling a function I know it's calling a function because it has these two brackets so now if I go to my JS um, file in or index.js file in our JS folder which is I've just opened up here you'll be able to see that function that, and that's actually looking up a, the document the HTML document um, finding the element that has the ID user input so if I go back to index.html you'll see the paragraph has an ID called name change and that's the oops sorry I beg your pardon um, this is actually taking the get element ID user input value which is if I go here if I look again I'll see user input is here under the type um, under the um, the input box um, where the user enters their enters their name so it stores that in the variable called user input so whatever the user puts in is stored in the variable then what it does is it looks for um, an ID an element with the ID name change which was the paragraph that I first picked and it changes this paragraph and it makes the paragraph equal to so it removes everything that's in that paragraph and it replaces that with welcome to the site which is what it originally had as well and this time it adds the person's name which is stored in the variable user input which was taken from the um, element the text box element that they entered their name into so it's relatively simple it might be a bit confusing at first but you can edit it and play around with it and you might find some interesting stuff that you can do with it um, this little short tutorial um, uh, I mean this kind of this code was actually taken from a website uh, and I'm gonna just bring that up and I'll show you how I found that website as well I actually just searched for JavaScript forms um, and then it was like the fourth one from the top so it's called like Tizag um, and if you scroll down you'll see lots of different ones so this is like a checking fields um, so if I click there's like an alert box pops up and tells you um, that you have to enter something in here if I type some letters it says it's an error if I type in a number then it works then it doesn't you know doesn't produce an error anyway um, and the example that I I just showed you is from JavaScript in a HTML if I remember correctly um, yeah so it's from here um, and I just modified this text slightly um, it's on there's this bold on our one it isn't so you can see how I did that and they've got a few other examples so they've got one where um, it even changes the color of the text so from black to white um, on their one they've put all the, the JavaScript and the HTML on the same section on mine I've separated it out um, it's up to you how you want to do that um, but just um, yeah just play around with it and see what you can do on our next example uh, I'm going to be showing you how to use an audio audio file um, so to use audio that's actually using some of the uh, uh, the features of the phone um, and that can't be tested um, by right clicking um, on your index or HTML file and going with open with web browser to test that you have to use either the emulator or a mobile phone because you're using um, features that are native to the phone um, anyway, for now, good luck with that. Uh, let me know how you get along and we'll move on uh, to the next tutorial.